It's amazing stuff. Well, I guess to kick things off then, uh, you know, let, let's kind of get to the core of the things, which is uh, what do we even mean by democratizing mixed reality? Like, what, what does that actually mean? Well, Seb, you, you had it up in your, in, you had it up in your intro, so I, I'll, I'll pass it back to you, sir. Very good, very good. What does it mean? I mean, for me, democratizing XR really means, you know, um, accessing people, um, well, basically where I'm coming from, it's, it's actually accessing the technology that sits in their pocket, right? So as, as I've started this journey in a mobile agency, for me, you know, it has evolved from mobile app development for a wide variety of, uh, of, of, of possibilities towards actually leveraging the camera that sits on that device and enabling it to, to enhance the world with, with three-dimensional content. So for me, when I speak to people about democratizing XR, it's always been like, how can I lead, uh, how can I reach the largest audience and at the same time reach them on a medium that they're familiar with, that they're comfortable with to use in their daily lives and get the most out of it, which I think the mobile or the tablet are great examples of devices that, that can serve the end user really well. But I mean, nowadays we're, we live in a landscape with a wide variety of devices that go on your head, uh, that go on your wrist, that you can speak towards. So there are endless pop possibilities for the end user to engage with immersive content. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll pause here and uh, I'll leave it to uh, Denise perhaps to uh, yeah, share her absolutely. perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's great that we, we all have these different perspectives. That's what I think adds a lot of value to these types of discussions from, from where I'm coming from democratizing XR. It's really about making it more accessible so that the wider world and general public have the ability to experience it, right? Because I very much feel like we we're kind of living in the 80s where sort of everything's happening and yet at the same time it feels like nothing's happening. Or at least it's happening very slowly, right? We're, we're all uh, within the industry really pushing for this mass adoption curve uh, for certain technologies. And it's really kind of a waiting game. There's a lot of different players on the board, a lot of different variables. But, you know, what does that mean for like an average consumer? Like how, how can you actually go in right now and, and touch and feel things that we're talking about when we say mixed reality? Uh, which we're huge proponents of at Blank XR and Spatial X, or or augmented reality. You know, augmented reality is more accessible because, you know, to your point, Sebastian, you can you've got a phone in your pocket, so you can, you know, we've all done like Snapchat filters, and you've all kind of put IKEA furniture in the room. But when it comes to getting beyond that, how can we actually open things up? Uh, one of the things that we're doing at Blank XR, as I mentioned in my intro, um, our company. What we do today, we're an immersive strategy agency. So we help brands and creators to form immersive strategies that make sense for their brand to enter into what we now call the metaverse. But really the metaverse is an umbrella term that's really forming its own definition right now, right? Because we know that that houses many different things like uh, different modalities, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. But how, how do we make that more accessible today? Because we have a, a far ranging vision that goes into 2030. We're working with smart architecture. Uh, we're working on creating different concepts ourselves and as well as helping clients. You know, one of the most exciting things is uh, we're working on a pop up concept store. Uh, which is a retail store that's blank inside and has nothing in it because you put a headset on <laughs> in this in our case it's a mixed reality headset um, so that you can actually see a projected um, shopping experience and we, we like to call it quantum retail uh, we call it that because you know in latin you know it really translates out to how much right how much retail um, and in one sense um, it gives people the ability to go into a physical environment in the real world that they can touch and feel themselves on the local high street and they can actually put on a headset and experience what we mean when we say you know you can just about touch these holograms right you can you can use your hands for gestures you can shop in a way that's personalized that you're used to because things are rendering you know we've got ai engines um, that are actually showing you things that are relevant to you uh, but just projected holographically so i mean there's there's different ways that we can interact i think my, my point here is that we can really interact and, and think about new ways that we can can 
re-energize physical spaces with immersive experiences to create more examples and more opportunities for people to come in and really touch and feel the future beyond the phone. Because I think the phone absolutely, ha we have to start there with what we have, but then when we take that next step, um, how do we kind of create opportunities for people to have more of an everyday experience? Because you can't really experience these things on, on, a, on, a, on a web call, right? Like you have to, you have to touch it, you have to feel the haptics, you have to you know, there's so much going on with the spatial audio you have to hear it right you have to experience it so it's kind of an opportunity to experience more and making it more accessible in the physical world is what i would say to answer your question meant. 